as you can see in the picture there is an arched bridge behind of which is the sandy station as it stands today on the left hand side you can see the supporting structure of what used to be the overhead bridge which used to link the ECML to the Midland Main Line. Here is an overhead of the same location. The black dot is going to be the position of the original photo and the lines are the lines where the actual tracks were laid originally. As you can see it's now a housing estate. This next map shows a continuation all the way to the A1 which is in the left of the picture. The A1 is now on the right hand side of the picture and as you can see the line would have taken a straight line all the way to Bedford from this point. This is now a cycle track. housing estate with one special house which is this one and this one is the old station house as it says on the gate if you can see that as you can see here station master's cottage some of the houses here are unbelievable, probably three or four hundred thousand pounds each. Um, there you go, the old station house. And there's the signpost. Okay, that's that for now. Speak soon. Bye. Myself and Joanne were at what was Willington Station. This is on the cycle path from Bedford to Sandy. And as you can see, it's vastly overgrown. But that's not surprising that it's been here for 40 plus years. Actually 50, or no, 40. Can't count. I'm up on the platform right now see where it goes. Lots of blackberries. It is August 19th. Big huge tree right in the middle. Ooh. Here we have what looks like part of a structure. Just get a bit closer. Try not to get stung by anything.
Again, I'm not sure what side the tracks were on because there's actually clearings on both sides. As you can see, there's a clearing over there. And there's the cycle path over there. I'm following the clearing. So where it takes me. Can you imagine this has been here this long and nobody's done anything about it? It's in the middle of nowhere, but I can't imagine. There's houses across the way there, but Who would have used this station? It's a shame it doesn't exist today because we need an east-west link connecting the ECML. Unfortunately, due to the cycle path and rowing lakes, I'm going to jump down here. See if I can jump down. So this is the. the um, cycle path. Some parts of the line suggest dual track and some parts of the line single track. Although it may have looked wider at the time or perhaps perhaps the track went down there as well. All we have here is a sewage works, so I'm not sure. It may have been something else 50 years ago. And there we have it, moving on. Moving along, along this bridge, as you can see, it's designed for a railway. The steel sides are very thick. There's a bridge support down there. It's the River Ouse. I've noticed in some places that the trees really widen. Now, there used to be a power station here called Goldington Power Station. So there may have been sidings or something to that effect here. There used to be a lot of coal traffic in the 60s. Um, it's since been demolished, taken down and turned into an attraction. We are approaching Bedford Marina boating marina and I'll catch up with you there. As you can see at Bedford Marina the exit from the track is there and here's the cycle path. So it may likely have followed that bit of path just there and across there. When I was a little boy there was a single track still there so it's been removed. At least we know it was single track on this part of the line. Unfortunately, I'm not too sure about the rest of the line where it could have been single or double track. Looking at the old station photographs, it would seem that the um, tracks were dual at least some part of the line. I know at the Sandy crossover bridge, which was filmed earlier on, that it was single track across there so obviously it went between single track and dual track depending on what part of the line you're on. Okie dokie moving on. Okay here we have a junction this is going to Bedford St John's. Where does that go? That is definitely a railway bridge of some description and there was definitely a junction right here so, we'll have to go look online and see where exactly that went. It might have been the Goldenton Power Station, may not, I don't know, we'll see.
This is a reverse angle of that extra bridge junction. And this is the Bingo Hall Pizza Hut and Fire Station. I'm noticing in some places that the gradients are kind of silly. As you can see here there is a steep decline. Whether or not that would have been here during the railway era, I don't know. It's interesting though, how it goes up and down a lot. This is the Bedford Oasis swimming pool. And beyond that is Tesco's. Here is another river bridge which adjusts dual track. Definitely dual track here I would imagine. Um, river Roos, some new roads. I remember seeing a class 25 along this patch of track when I was about six years old, pulling one or two wagons, probably cutting down or weeding the area since it was disused for a long time. I think they did actually plan to keep it open for a while. I'm just at the foot of just that last bridge and as you can see the pathway comes to an end so the railway must have continued along a bridge here and they've knocked it down or something else or the trees just grew very big. But what is strange here is that the incline gradient is quite steep for a train, I would imagine. Here's the cycle path now. I would imagine the track went along that ridge just there, about 20 feet, 30 feet ahead of me. And eventually as it declines down, I would imagine it joins up with the cycle path. I think it's quite clear to see where the actual track was. It definitely looks like there was a track bed there at some point. It seems that my first observation was incorrect. It doesn't join the cycle path over there. It actually comes out over here. And it goes over there beside that building. This used to be a level crossing. It never did actually get used. Well, very, very briefly if it did. It was only there for about five years and during that time nothing ran down here so so that's that and that goes to Bedford St John's here we can see an overhead view of the last location and as you can see the main road you can see where the level crossing would have been here I'm going to draw some lines in now so you can see exactly where I was and how that joins up to Bedford St John's Here we see a map of Bedford St. John's or the location of the old Bedford St. John's. I'm going to draw in some lines including the triangular formation of the track so you can see how it attached to the um, branch to Bletchley and the um, left side upper side uh, bend of the current track which goes to Bedford Midland. So here we go, here is the um, here is the triangulation and the black line just where the track was. The arrows are pinpointing where St. John's Station actually was. Thank you for watching. That's the end.